Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today I wanted to talk about one of the most destructive myths in filmmaking. And it's one that almost everyone believes and buys into. It is the myth of genius. As filmmakers, we look up to, sometimes idolize these directors like George Lucas, Francis Ford Coppola, Brian De Palma, because of the iconic and incredible films that they've made, many of which made us want to become filmmakers uh, when we were young. And the idea around these films and these filmmakers is the film just sort of happened naturally. They had these amazing ideas and they were able to, through force of will and amazing talent, create them from nothingness into the form that they are. I want to tell you today that that is marketing. That is Hollywood marketing, that there is no such thing as natural talent. I just finished Francis Ford Coppola's 500 page biography of Filmmaker's Life. And while he had a crazy amount of natural energy, drive, grit, determination, and a little bit of craziness, he certainly didn't have anything approaching talent. How can I say that? You look at The Godfather, The Conversation, The Godfather Part Two, and Apocalypse Now. And it's one of the greatest runs in cinema history. They're all done over a eight year period, multiple Oscars, some of the highest grossing films in history by one person, it will probably never be equaled. What nobody talks about when they talk about those films over that period is Dementia 13, Francis Ford Coppola's first movie for Roger Corman, which is terrible. Finnegan's Wake, absolutely claptrap musical starring the 70 something Fred Astaire who could no longer dance. That was a complete disaster. You're a big boy now, the coming of age farce hated by critics and audiences alike. And then The Rain People, which is the fourth film from Francis Ford Coppola, which he shot over a summer driving around in a van with James Caan and some other actors who by all reports didn't like him very much. In that same van was George Lucas shooting his first film, which was the making of. So I'm happy to know that in all my uh, BTS making of films, uh, I'm in good company with George Lucas's big break. The only reason he got to direct the Godfather was that he was Italian American and Italian Americans were protesting the film. And the only reason that he agreed to direct Godfather was that he was totally broke, having spent all his writing money on dubious real estate deals. And there are plenty of other so-called geniuses making terrible film after terrible film, sometimes for decades, and then hitting it big almost by accident and being proclaimed geniuses. I was watching the Brian De Palma documentary where he goes over all the films that he made in his career one by one. The vast majority of them, like 90% of them, got terrible reviews and flopped at the box office. But we only remember the gems like Scarface and Mission Impossible. What these people did well was hold on for decades until they finally got a hit. That doesn't mean they made hit and after hit, it usually means they made a bunch of other failures, but we remember the hits and the hits keep them in the game. I think what is misconstrued as genius is determination and luck. If you're determined to stick with this long enough, you will eventually get lucky. Some people get lucky on their first try, but then again, a couple of hundred people win the lottery every week. That doesn't mean winning the lottery is a career plan. But if you're doing work that you're proud of, that interests you and engages you, you will eventually meet with success. The Coppola biography actually sounds more like the story of an addict than a genius. He just can't help himself. He keeps going back in and again and again. All this to say, don't let the fact that you may not be a genius discourage you from pursuing a career in film or pursuing a career in anything creative. Genius is what we call people when the project they happen to be working on somehow meets an audience that's ready to hear it at exactly the right time. A lot of that is out of their control. What is in your control is the ability to shoot as often as you can, to look at your work honestly and get better. And if you end up making a film against all odds and it falls short, doesn't find its audience, doesn't make the amount of money that you hoped it would, you are in very good company. 99% of films don't. That is why most people quit. And if you don't quit and you stay in the game somehow, you'll be doing better than 99% of filmmakers. The big thing that really helped me was being able to shoot my own work rather than relying on a cinematographer or a crew. Yes, cameras are complicated, lighting is complicated, 
but you can learn these skills. Check out Canon Masterclass if you're interested in picking up a camera and making good looking work yourself. I have a ton of tutorials there and a lot of people have had good success with it. Keep learning, keep striving, keep experimenting, keep looking for ways to make your work better, but also to make it more enjoyable because the odds are that you'll be doing it for the next couple of decades before you get rich. It took me over 20 years before I made a comfortable living making films. And to be honest, I wouldn't trade that for anything. Stay in the game, keep swinging. Even if your number never comes up, it is an incredible life. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.